Hello, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> Connor, nice to meet you. It is nice to meet you. How is how is your vision for you right now? It's uh well, what can I say? It's uh it's big. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And it's so uh well, it's only just begun. That's true. I mean, yeah, we are. It's day. I'm losing track of time. It's like day three, I think, of, of rehearsals right now. Something like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So still plenty of time ahead of us to, to have fun, experience Rotterdam and everything like that. I'm probably not going to experience much. It's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. I feel like some of the other artists have been telling me that, like, you know, there still has been a little bit of downtime, something that they maybe didn't expect is, is so much downtime. Are they still mm -hmm. keeping you really busy or, or do you still have some like self-care rest time in your schedule? No, I have like uh, no spare time at all. <laughs> uh, yesterday I, uh, I started working six o'clock in the morning and I was done. I had my first pause at, well, at midnight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, now, I even I was even like handed food from the side, like <laughs> here, eat this. It's it's very much like uh, I don't know if you've ever watched like the at the Olympics when they have like like uh, that marathon and they, they have uh, water bottles on poles and you just. It's exactly it. like that for me. <laughs> I know exactly, exactly like what you're that. Talking about. Yeah, and I kind of feel like I'm in kin in kindergarten because there's always like people. Uh, that has to watch me and has to make sure that you have to go there now. Okay, I'll follow you. Take my hand. And then, yeah. Yep, yep. They're shepherding you along along the journey. A Absolutely, bit. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, one thing that I think a couple of our our audience members and our, our readers are curious about is, you know, what kind of made you want to participate in Melody Grand Prix? What was kind of the the reasoning behind your entrance? I have been uh, I have been a huge fan of Eurovision for many years, but uh, well, since I was young. Mm -hmm. But um, I had a really, really big artist career in Norway, and I wasn't really planning on participating until um, I had this song, uh, "Fallen Angel," um, and it just sounded like the perfect. Um, arena for that song would be Eurovision because it, it's about well it has some of the same uh, kind of the same theme as uh, Eurovision it's about diversity it's about uh, encouraging people to be themselves it's okay to be extra it's okay to take the space and um, and also I thought like Eurovision was a really um a really, really nice platform to to give this song a more visual life as well. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of tell a story at Eurovision that you can't do on like a studio album. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, the more I played with the idea of participating, the more I understood that. Okay, sh shit. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. We well, can edit that out. <laughs> okay, shit. Um, <laughs> I was like, wow, I can, I can really, um, I can really accomplish something here, no matter how well it might play out. Yes. But I can, I can really like, um, I can help a lot of people here. Yeah. And uh, the more I opened up and told my story to people, the more people seemed to resonate with it. So yeah, uh, I'm really just here to. To uh, tell my story, to inspire people, to motivate people, and, and make some uh, fun memories, and to meet all the other artists and uh, have a good time. Yes, that's the important part. Oh. It's making sure you soak in the time uh, there at Eurovision while you've got it. Uh, it's only, I'm trying. It's only I two weeks, so um, I know. But, but I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm here on a mission, really. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, and I, I think that that's something that's really important to point out is um, you have been very vocal and outspoken about um, issues of like mental health and your own personal mm -hmm. journey as well. Um, 
do you feel or do you find that kind of those issues and your music kind of intersect a lot or do you try and keep them separate? Um, I guess uh, they do now. They didn't earlier. Uh, well, in Norway, I've kind of been like, I've been described as the soundtrack to all the good times, the soundtrack to the weekends, you know, mm-hmm. um, to all the parties and stuff. Uh, but now I'm really trying to focus on also being the soundtrack of the, yeah, of the, of the sad times, I guess. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess they go pretty much hand in hand. Yeah. They've really kind of, uh, connected together to, to be a more authentic version of yourself than trying to kind of put on maybe like a, like a mask of, of happiness and things like that. Absolutely. And I think that's like, um, yeah, it just adds a whole new dimension to both, both me and to, and to the music. I mean, we're all just like, we're all just people. We have our ups and downs, but I, I, but most people, you would be surprised by like, by, I mean, like how many people that are actually struggling out there? I mean, it's fucking everybody. Yes. Uh, and once you start talking about it, then like everybody can relate to it. Uh, I'm surprised there aren't more artists that really try to focus on that. Um, it seems like a lot of artists, uh, they tell their story once and then, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really, yeah, not, uh, I don't know. Uh, I had it in Norwegian in my mind, but I couldn't say it in English. But yeah, I'm really just, yeah, I'm here on a mission. Yeah, no, I totally understand what you're saying. Mm. And um, I, I think a, con- a question that's connected to this is, um, you know, knowing what you know now, is there any, like, if you could go back in time and visit the younger version of yourself, do you think <laughs> that there's any advice that you would give yourself? What would you tell younger ticks? Uh, oh, good question. Uh, well, I think I turn up. I turn out pretty, pretty well. Okay, I guess so. Um, I don't know if I would. I actually don't know if I would tell him anything or like disturb the process because, I mean, that process of evolving is so valuable to me. Uh, it's what uh, made me able to reflect on my own emotions and also other people's emotions. Um, and maybe able to see what other people might be feeling. But I, I guess, okay, um, if I could go back, I guess I would tell myself that um, yeah, it sounds like a cliche, but I think I could say it in a way that would be really uh what do you say uh trustworthy or like uh it would be um like meaningful almost meaningful yeah yeah i think i could say it in a not cliche way that um that uh, that even your like even your biggest weakness can actually turn out to become your greatest strength Mm. uh the ability to uh, take something unique uh, uh, and make it an advantage. Um, that's what's going to really make you stand out in a good way. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, be, I, I, be authentically I have you. like a quote. Hmm? Be authentically you. Yeah, uh, but um, I mean, there's a... Uh, I'm trying to say it like in a way that doesn't sound cliche, but yeah, just 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 be yourself. It's like such a. It doesn't help anybody to say be yourself, uh, but I want people to understand why it's okay to be yourself. And to me, being myself, well, it's about not just being yourself. It's about embracing yourself. It's about uh, yeah. it's about really like be proud of it and just make it your identity. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. uh, like I said in an interview here, uh, 
we're not perfect. And the fact that we're imperfect is exactly what makes us so valuable. Yeah. Um, and I thought about it for a while. And I, I think what I meant about that is if some, for something to be perfect, I'm, welcome to philosophy 101 with takes. Uh, <laughs> well, for something to become, to be considered perfect, uh, it has to be measured up to like an ideal of some kind. Mm -hmm. And if something can be measured, then it's, um, it's predictable. Yeah. And if something is so predictable that it just picks up like all the, all the, it checks off all those little boxes, then it doesn't really have any value anymore or that much of a value anymore. Right. You put yourself in a box, in a box that you don't want to be in. I, I, yeah, I, I agree. And I, I mean, a Charizard Pokemon card that there's only one of <laughs> is insanely valuable. But if there were like 50,000 Charizards out there, nobody would care. Exactly. Okay, so that, yeah, exactly. that's. There you go. <laughs> Be the Charizard in the world. Be the Charizard card. Be the fucking Charizard. <laughs> awesome. Well, taking it to something that's a little less philosophical to something that maybe is a little bit more... Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no, no, you're fine. But something that, I mean, is more uh, maybe positive and I think interesting for yep. our readers. If you got to replace Fallen Angel with a mm -hmm. song from another Eurovision artist from this year, so anything from the roster of 38 songs, what song would you say, that's my song, I'm going to perform it at Eurovision? Oh, if I could perform one song. <sighs> oh, oh, oh. Mm. It's a hard one. Yeah, it's really difficult. Because uh, there are so many, I mean, there are so many, so many different roads I could take. I mean, uh, I could choose to focus on the message or I could choose to focus on the song that would be easier to sing for me or the song that's the most catchy mm -hmm. catchiest song or I could well I think um, I was actually uh, right before my first uh, stage rehearsal um, uh, I was warming up by singing along to uh, El Diablo by uh, yeah, Elena yeah. from uh, Cyprus. Uh, I just love that song. Um, so I think may maybe that one. Um, it will be kind of awesome to sing Ukraine's song, too. That's true. You're going to work on that would be Ukrainian. <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. Hearing me. I, I don't think I could pull that off. There's no way. But yeah, I think, um, um, well, if I'm being realistic, then maybe El Diablo, I think. Okay. All right. Well, maybe there is a duet uh, in the future between you and Elena from Cyprus on on that. No, wait, 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 wait. Mama, mama, the hari. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah. All right, so we're going to switch over to Effendi then from Azerbaijan. I have some love for Effendi. I have a lot of love for Effendi. All right. And totally and, crushing on her. And speaking of other artists, I mean, again, I know that there's kind of a lot of restrictions that are going on and they're kind of trying to keep you in a bubble. But have you been able to kind of interact with some of your fellow Eurovision artists? Uh, no, not yet. Except I am staying at the same hotel as Tissa from Sweden. Okay. So uh, Sweden and I, uh, we're besties. Uh, so we have breakfast together uh, this morning. Um, but other than that, people tend to like, uh, they have their stage rehearsals and then uh, they just kind of disappear into an interview here and then they have to go there and then there. And then you just like kind of, it's just a black hole of interviews and stuff. Yes. A lot of things happening here. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think because of uh, the restrictions, things are in many ways, in, ma in many ways, a lot busier 
this year, but still kind of like maybe just for the artists. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but but it's a lot quieter here also, I think. Yeah. Uh, there aren't that many people at the arena. Right, right. It at least gets you and a, a, helps you uh, get into the state of mind that you need to get into for whatever you're doing versus worrying about, oh, there goes. I don't know. I want to be up here. I want to <laughs> I want to party. But, I know. But I'm, I know. I'm also kind of grateful that there aren't uh, like a little. Well, it's OK that there aren't parties like every night here because I would I would have been exhausted by now. Yes. And it's only been like two days for me. Yep. Yeah, well, perhaps the the uh, reunion of Eurovision 2021 artists can happen so that you can all get together and have a party uh, once everything kind of calms down just a little bit. So maybe if oh, you want to be the be chief, so amazing. yeah, if you want to be the chief organizer of that, I will put that responsibility over on you. I, like <laughs> seriously, I, I can't I can't take on any more responsibility right now. <laughs> My calendar is. Act. Yes, well, we've got a while probably until that might happen. But I do have one final question for you. And and this is mostly just because I know that your career is not going to end after Eurovision. It was there before and it'll be there after. But what are some things that are upcoming? Do you have any projects, albums, concerts planned? Anything like that? Yeah, I do. Hey. Um, um a lot of projects um like i said um i am on a mission right now not only in eurovision but like in general um and the mission is basically that just to make 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 the days go by a little easier for the tens of thousands of kids that are like scared to go to school every single day mm-hmm. um and i really think i can do something about that so that's what i'm working on right now um yeah and to spread awareness about mental health obviously um because i mean being an artist you have to focus you have to focus on uh, you have to focus on the music all the time. You have to focus on like uh, the financing of stuff. But I don't really have that. I I don't really have to concern about that anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think I'm in the right place to um, to really make some changes. At least in Norway, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going to start. Okay. So there are definitely big things on the horizon. Uh, so if you haven't already, or if you are curious, where can they kind of follow you and find, find out what's going on in, in Tix's life? Uh, well, Instagram, uh, Instagram, Tix Music, um, but, um, I'd rather that you didn't follow me because if you do, then you'll, you'll see all the, all the really awkward videos that I, out where I'm like um, worshiping my queen Asandi from Azerbaijan uh, and that will be kind of awkward but if you're into that kind of stuff then yeah you can follow me hey you can merge the two <laughs> kingdoms of Tix and Effendi together so I don't think that that's awkward at all <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, I want to be cognizant of your time because as you mentioned earlier, you are busy, you've got a schedule. But thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to sit down with me and, and with our audience to kind of talk a little bit about, about your Man, question. thank you, Connor. This was really nice. Uh, yeah. no, it felt like you're relaxed on a safe space. It was yeah, nice. Okay. Thank you very much. You are more than welcome. I'm super excited to see. I mean, I know that you'll be back uh, later this week for second rehearsals and dress rehearsals next week and everything. Uh, but mm-hmm. just make sure that you're enjoying the time and having fun. Everything else will fall in line as everything kind of kind of comes along throughout the weeks. So I will. I will. I will try my best. Awesome. We'll have an amazing day. Thank okay? you. And bye, bye everyone watching. And bye. <laughs>